So um, I just want to see a show of hands. How many of you consider yourselves environmentalists? Just about everybody here. How many consider yourselves uh, peace activists? So just about everybody here. Um, that's not the way it is uh, necessarily <laughs> out there in the activist world. And unfortunately, we have allowed ourselves to be divided up by what kind of movement, which issue we think is the most important, and allowed ourselves to fight with each other over which is most important. Oh, you know, the, the most important is the climate because if we continue on this path, there won't be a world to live in. Well, if somebody uh, presses a button and there's a nuclear bomb, there won't be a world to live in. Oh, well, you know, if we keep the money in politics, we won't have a uh, democracy to live in to help save the planet, and on and on and on. Um, I hope we are moving beyond that. And I remember when um, some of us started to organize against the invasion of Iraq, we went out to our friends in the environmental community and said, join us in opposing the war in Iraq. And it was hard to get people to join in because they didn't see it as part of their movement. And uh, we continue to this day uh, to uh, have a hard time sometimes reaching out to our friends in the environmental movement to say war and environment are so intimately involved. Just let's take a look at the Pentagon itself. The largest industrial polluter in the world by far is the Pentagon. I think that deserves booing, not clapping. <laughs> 350 million barrels a day, just about. Uh, there are only 35 countries in the world that consume as much oil as, as our Pentagon consumes. And the irony, the very tragic irony of it, is most of it is being used to protect what? Our access to oil. And uh, the access to oil tends to be in places like the Persian Gulf and the waterways. Um, we would have never invaded Iraq if it had been for it, we wouldn't be such great friends with the extremist Saudi Arabia were it not for oil. Now, you know, there is a dangerous thing in this work, though, and some of us here are working now on the issue of Saudi Arabia and how do we break the ties, and people come up to us and say, see, you know we have to produce more of the oil domestically so that we're not reliant on these Middle Eastern countries. And we say to them, no, the answer is, sustainable alternative green sources of energy, not nuclear energy, not c clean coal, in quotes, uh, and certainly uh, not the continued treadmill of fossil fuels. So if we have to um, find ways to merge these movements together, I think another uh, argument that we have to talk to people about is what is it that our bloated Pentagon is protecting, not just our access to oil, our access to markets, our access to cheap labor, our access to other kinds of resources. I just came back from Honduras where you saw the US military ramping up and US military aid ramping up to that country in the wake of a coup, which by the way, they reminded us over and over again, was supported by Hillary Clinton when she was Secretary of State. Um, and it opened up the country to all of these concessions for mining, concessions for putting uh, dams in, access to resources, affects the poorest people in Honduras, the indigenous community, the ones most affected by it. And you see that the US military is right in there ensuring that US clothing companies have access to the cheap labor in the sweatshops there, that US mining companies have access to the mines, and you see it as this vicious circle. And one of the things we really promote in the rest of the world is our unhealthy lifestyle, our overconsumption, our consumption of crap. I mean, how many of you have traveled around the world and everywhere you go, so you see Pepsi Cola and Coca Cola, and it's so gross. Gross. These drinks that have nothing except bad nutritional value and taking poor people's money away. Uh, our overconsumption of fast uh, fried foods that where you go around the world and now, now see things like Kentucky Fried Chicken and McDonald's all over the place. So we are exporting a lifestyle that is unsustainable for the planet and we are using our military as part of opening the wedge. You might have heard of Thomas Friedman's quote that is so apt that says, you can't have McDonald's without McDonald Douglas. 
So as we move towards what are the solutions and how are we going to address these issues of both climate change uh, and war, it seems to me we really have to look at how do we build our movements together? How do we convince each other that we are part of the same movement? How do we convince each other that we have to work together to cut our horrendously bloated Pentagon budget because that is where the money is to take us into a world of clean energy. That is the only place where there are so many billions of dollars they can't even find them because they've never been able to pass an audit. So when we work together to say that the bloated Pentagon has to be cut because it's being used to invade other countries and occupy their countries, it's also to say it's to free up the funds so that we can use our money for things that are good for us. And when we talk about things that are good for us, let's recognize in our own country, it's the poorest, it's the people of color, it's the communities that have the least resources at their disposal, that are the ones that are the hardest hit by the polluting industries, the hardest hit by climate change. And so we have to do a much better job in our movements to hook up with those communities to work together. We also have... We also have to look at where are we so wastefully spending our money in terms of foreign policies, like now way over $3 billion a year, it's going to be now $4 billion a year, that we were giving to the repressive government of Israel that is repressing the Palestinians. Let's take that money and give it to poor countries that need the money to address the climate crisis. There are so many ways that we could so better use our financial resources in this, this country to address those issues. And I just want to end with a plea to say that we are in a moment where the eyes of our country and the eyes of the world are on our electoral process. And certainly it's true what Mark said that if you look at the platforms of the Republican Party and you look at the platforms of the Democratic Party, uh, one is way better than the other in terms of many issues that many of us care about. But certainly the Democratic platform is not good enough. It's not good enough. It should definitely be a clearly in opposition to the Trans-Pacific Partnership that is so disastrous for the climate and the people. It should be so clearly against fracking, which so many of you in this room have worked so hard for. And, you know, I'm bringing up some of the other issues that we as Code Pink work on. It does not address anything about the bloated Pentagon budget. It doesn't address the need to get out of these wars we should never have been in. It doesn't address the need to shift the resources from the Pentagon budget to things like addressing the climate crisis. So while we work in this electoral season, let's recognize, yes, we want to defeat the worst of the worst, but we want to make the mainstream, the other mainstream party, the Democratic Party, um, way better than it is. We don't want to criticize people who are looking for alternatives, like in the Green Party. If they do that, that is certainly their right to do it, and we should appreciate and respect what people decide they want to put their energies towards. And um, let's know that no matter what happens in November, no matter who gets into that White House, we are going to have somebody in there who is a hawk, who's going to push us into more wars. We're going to have somebody in there who is beholden to the 1%, and that's the 1% that means big oil, that's the 1% that means Wall Street, that's the 1% that continues to lead us down this path of destruction of our, of our planet. So let's not get complacent, let's not give any honeymoon after November. Let's build these movements together and demand, no matter what party is in power, that it does our bidding, which is to save the beautiful planet we're living on. Thank you. <laughs>